Weddings are a lot of fun, but planning can be kind of tough. There are so many details to think about, and it's easy to forget what's really important along the way. And if you've watched this series before, you'll have heard a lot of advice from us and from other wedding vendors about planning sustainable events, but we haven't yet heard from married couples themselves. So this season, we've invited four recently married couples to a dinner party to chat about their wedding planning experience, the good, the bad, and everything in between. They'll sit down with our friend Sarah, an event planner here in Victoria, to chat about their own weddings and to share their insights. Throughout the night, we'll be treated to deliciously scrappy ackies and local libations. So let's sit around the table and talk about how to get you sustainably wet. So speaking of the people who are at our wedding, either as guests or as family or friends, I think, you know, just dealing with guests and those people is something that comes into play when we're planning a wedding and it can cause some uh, fun moments as maybe have been described or <laughs> some derailment or it can be a really helpful community who's helping guide you. But I think uh, something that is universal to every couple who's planning a wedding is that moment of, okay, you just got engaged or you just announced it and everyone's immediately coming at you with opinions and questions. And who knew Uncle Bob was so passionate about guest transport? <laughs> like, <laughs> just give me a second. Um, yeah, so whether it's family, friends, or maybe it was just the scope and scale of your wedding, because I know some people had some changes there. I'd love to hear more about how you all thought about or handled you know, guest experience versus guest expectations and how that you know, was navigated and keeping true to yourself and keeping true to your visions. So maybe we can start with a bit more general. How many people did you invite and what size wedding did you do? We had just like a hundred people, out of a hundred and yeah, hundred and five. Okay. There you go. <laughs> um, after I said just under a hundred, <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> um, sorry, what was the question? So how many people? So how many and people? Then, and why did you do that size of wedding? How did you yeah, get to one hundred and five? Well, that was a compromise. Okay. Um, to be quite honest, I wanted to have an if if if, if it was my wedding. <laughs> I'll just leave. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been like, you know, 25 people max, and right. that would have been perfect for me. But um, but I know that Casey has a bigger family, so and so that was just a good um, middle ground. Um, okay. Plus, when we picked the Bengal, that's why we picked that, because mm -hmm. it limited us to like 100 and something mm -hmm. max people. Mm -hmm. So that was a good way for us to like really hone in and... And, um, I like that. So you compromised, yeah. but then you had a restriction anyway that you could fall back exactly. on when people were like, why wasn't I invited? Yeah. Well, the venue. Yeah. And I think following COVID, it's a lot easier. People are a little bit more um, understanding of, you know, the limitations of holding a wedding. But I remember the first time we did our guest list and I was like, okay, so how many people do you have? And he was like, I have 25. He's like, what? <laughs> 25 people show up at my parents on a, like a, you know, a, a nice holiday. <laughs> like, I need more than that. Nice. Um, but it was nice to have that limitation. Okay. So it's about 100-ish? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Ran Rob, you have an interesting story around this, obviously. We do, yeah, because we did a surprise wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Some people didn't get invited. Well, it was, so it was multi-level surprise, because not only were we having a surprise ceremony for us and just our family but we were having a surprise reception for our family and friends and to be able to pull that off we had to rope in my brother to get him convinced to present it as if he was pulling off a surprise engagement party for us right so many so, levels of surprise yeah <laughs> how many people did you end up with so we ended up with i think around 43 okay. yeah. Um, I'm guessing because it's a while ago, but I think we invited 50. Yeah. Um, and most of them, like, we were, like, addressing the envelopes to, like, the families. Right. So we didn't have to print as many invitations. Um, but I think our original list was, like, 80. Okay. And why did you go down to 50? Because it turned out to be me being like, you don't ever see these people. Yeah. Are we gonna invite them to dinner at our house? Yeah. <laughs> if we're not, then they're not coming to the wedding. That's a really great metric though. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah, it definitely became more intentional. 
in who we invited. And our venue only allowed, what, 60? A squishy, a squishy 60. Yeah. 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 So functionally, it made sense, too. Yeah. Nice. Simon and Allie, obviously, maybe you had an original guest count. <laughs> uh, yeah, our first list. And I think, yeah, we did send out the invites the first round. Um, I think it was the capacity of the venue, and it was, it was like, like 150. Okay, so you were like, going we big. wanted a rager, <laughs> 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 and we were prepared for one. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, in keeping with the most, like when we had to reschedule and turn it into a DIY thing, it was like under 70, I think. Yeah. Because the most recent um, limitations, I think it was 75. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we had to keep it under 75 so yeah. i think it was something like that which worked out better it was i think less i think we well i didn't a want 150 of... people in my house no. <laughs> it's there's been a... done but i, I don't yeah. want, didn't want that there's a lot of people we wish that could have been there but mm. the less we were able to kind of i felt like i connected with at least everyone there once right because with the bigger one i feel like i yeah. couldn't keep up but yeah we got to yeah. like speak with everyone there that's huge. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a question I have after, um, once we figure out where everyone was, for sure. How many did you have? I think it was a 47, if we're going. Yeah, yeah. including 49 us. 49, including or us. Or 49, okay. including us, yeah. So smaller, but from everywhere, right? From everywhere, yeah. yeah. So I think we kind of factored in where people were coming from. Um, and also, similarly, we wanted to make sure that we had like a moment with everybody, that we could actually talk to everybody, that everybody could talk to each other, um, and just kind of like cut down on the formality of things. So yeah, yeah. Uh, similarly though, there were people that we wish we could have invited to, but. Yeah. Um, but we had these like, um, I call it like bimodal like groups. Like if you invite one, you've got another layer of people you have to. Right. So then we're like, yeah. so we had to, better. yeah. And then, <laughs> yeah, and we both have like large extended families yeah. that really hang out with each other. Yeah. So we're like, okay, it can't be this because then there's this, all these people you need to invite. So it got to this core 47, yeah. 49, including us. And so something we ended up doing was we did little dinners yeah. after our wedding. Very cool. Yeah. And so we then celebrated with those people that couldn't make it, yeah. that would have been if right. they were uh, in BC uh, or what have you. Nice, so within the intimate groups that would have been there yeah. anyways, but just on different days instead of one. Yeah, so we yeah. milked our wedding celebration oh, yeah. for like we're months. Still going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think it's, yeah. Yeah, we're not done everything yeah, yet, so. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I like that a lot, milk it. Um, should we have some food? Yes. Go any further? So that was the best transition so far. <laughs> the team at Mensch Catering provided the incredible dishes for our dinner party and they did not disappoint. Chef Dan, his brother Michael, and their team prioritize using local and sustainable ingredients in really creative ways. So what I've started here is to make our batter for our crepes. And what we're doing that's kind of cool about that that's a little bit different is we're using einkorn. Um, that's one of the original wheat varietals, something that has um, kind of hasn't been part of the mainstream in agriculture for a long time because the yield isn't great and now it's coming back as a response to a lot of the gluten um, allergies that we're seeing as well as just the nutritional content that is basically void from a lot of the um, conventional wheat that's being grown. So this is a highly nutritious and flavorful wheat varietal that we're getting. Again, it's, it's, it's grown in BC or Alberta um, and, and it's milled in-house. <laughs> Yeah, so it's going to be a little bit heartier. It's going to have more of a prominent flavor. Um, all those things we really love. So, uh, yeah, so we're using that for the crepe. Um, we're going to be using a chicory um, radicchio leaf inside of that, and then the lamb belly, which we're going to cook uh, sous vide, crisp up right before we serve it, and then serve it with some of our summer pickles here. So um, this is our, our summer pickle mix. Um, it's peppers, onions, garlic, uh, cipollini onions. Yeah, it's, it's something that we've fill the gap for our sourcing by doing all this preservation because for us we want to be able to source locally year-round but because you know most farmers don't have a heated greenhouse most farmers don't have the space to store tons of crops in the, in the winter we need to do a lot on our end to extend the season so instead of shopping at our farmers markets and going to farms and uh, you know in December and January we're just we're just going to our pantry where we've already done the work So, between 50 to 100 people it sounds.
sounds like, depending on, on the wedding. I'm curious, and some of you have already touched on it, as to how that actually felt in practice. You know, was it intimidating or overwhelming? Was it intimate? Did you talk to everyone? How did that play out? And was it, uh, were there any regrets around that? No regrets. Mm -hmm. I think that was perfect. Like, I mean, initially, I mean, I got my way, but having um, a private ceremony um, the day before, so that was really good. Um, so that's something that I think um, coming back to some of the pillars and the values that we have, like really standing strong on those ones. So like, I think the whole wedding in general um, was, was, it felt like it was just, it was perfect. Because really. you just had four people at the ceremony, was it? So you really did a best of both worlds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We separated the ceremony, so it was a private intimate ceremony, just with Michael and I and our two best friends. Um, and none of our guests saw that until the feature film. Cool. Yeah, so no one, they still haven't actually seen it. They saw highlights of it in the, um, in the highlight film, but so that's something that we're kind of saving for a special comeback, but mm -hmm. the, we were so intentional and I think that's key when you're intentional about who is at your wedding, then it impacts like your experience of it. And the like one word that comes out of almost every single guest's mouth is love. They were just like, I couldn't believe how much love there was in the room for the day, for each other, for, you know, being in, a, in that group. So we picked the right hundred people. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think that's yeah. great. And coming down from excess, you know, left that actual value that you were looking for. That's really cool. Rad and Rob? Felt like a good number? I think so. It wasn't too crowded. Um, and I know my mom said something, because she was worried, you know, because the first marriage didn't go well. So she was worried about the kind of people that Rob and his family were. She'd only met Rob once before that. And she said, like, she got a really good understanding of who everybody was in Rob's life and was really happy for, for me and for us. And, Gonna cry. <laughs> no, but yeah, like it. It it was nice that she was able to gather all of that from just one evening. And it's because you made it intentionally intimate, right? Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I yeah. like that. And for Simon, especially who wanted the rager, I'm so curious. <laughs> even with just 75 people, did you still get that feeling though? I mean, even with the five best guests, it still would have been a rager. Yeah. Like, well, just me and Allie, it's a rager. So. <laughs> So we, yeah, I mean, it was perfect. It was absolutely perfect. Nice. And after what we had been through, like, we were just so grateful to have what we had. Yeah. After. Just to have something. <laughs> yeah. Anything. It could have been anything. We could have yeah. gone to McDonald's at, it at that point. Like, it was. Actually, we did go to McDonald's. Oh, yeah, we did. <laughs> You want to talk about the local the, McDonald's? The yeah. least, the least sustainable thing we did that day. Yeah. Okay. I still have McDonald's after every wedding I do. That. So you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and a tip: if you go through the McDonald's drive-through in your wedding dress and and you say we just got married, they yeah. give you free pies. Okay. Oh, nice. So I know what I'm doing tonight. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Put that wedding dress on. <laughs> you do get great <laughs> service yeah. when you're in yeah, here. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We actually had a moment like that where we went up to um, Superflux just Ooh. before our yeah. ceremony. Yeah. And right. We had a, a per drink. Brian and Chelsea's suggestion, yeah, right? I think it was, yes. yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, we had was, we never yeah. had better service. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah, it was really cool. <laughs> yeah, I think 50 for us felt really good. Yeah. Like, it felt like we were able to, to like I said, kind of like chat with everybody. Um, and even then, I felt like, like I never didn't enough time. have enough time. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how, how could I have had different conversations if it was even larger? Yeah. Um, and then we saw pictures and I was like, oh, it was actually like not a lot of people. Like sometimes I look at the dance floor, I was like, oh, it was way more packed in my mind. That's uh, actually really cool though. Which is like your Simon's point around like, it would have been a rager right. with you yeah. two, the five people. It was fun regardless. Yeah, and I think yeah. the dance floor is where we spent most of the oh, yeah. time with our people. So yeah. that makes sense. My mom had her shoes off. It was on the dance floor <laughs> after yeah. cocktail hour, so yeah. I mean, and when it comes back to sus um, sustainability, right? Having a smaller footprint overall, having a smaller guest count can really help. So it's really interesting to hear that there wasn't a whole lot lost or missed in those really intentional decisions that had nothing to do with sus um, sustainability, but kind of came to fruition anyway. That's definitely cool. Okay, the other side of people who are involved in our wedding though, we have the guests and that's great. We also have our family and friends and those closest to us who maybe have a lot of expectations or thoughts or 
um, unasked for opinions that come through. Just curious if anyone has any examples of how that, you know, either derailed them or if you had challenges around that and how that was dealt with. Mm. <laughs> oh, I see a smile. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I was going to initially be like, you know, we didn't have as many, we weren't challenged as much because people didn't know what to expect, you know, they didn't cool. have the preconceived notion of what our wedding would look like, therefore couldn't be like, you should do this. Like, so we didn't have that interaction except my best friend who, you know, forced upon us the decision of who to invite and, and he's in a thruple situation. So it was already kind of complex as to like, you don't get a plus one, you, you don't get a plus two. And then there, so there were like some discussions about who should be at the wedding. Yes. Um, so that was the only challenge. Um, and we had to, you know, really come to terms with the fact that like we were choosing these guests. The, we wanted to be the ones who were choosing who were going to be there to share our special moment. Yeah. Um, and that was probably the only in the budget, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. yeah. I think that was it. Like no one else challenged yeah. us. That's. I mean, but it sounds like that is an intricate challenge, an intimate one that mm -hmm. you came up against. But you stayed true to what you were looking for, and mm -hmm. that's very cool. Ran Rob. I mean, it sounds like there could have been a very different wedding that went mm -hmm. on, and maybe some expectations around that. Yeah, I think us doing it the way we did, kind of limiting the amount of outside influence we had, was very much true to how we wanted to portray our wedding and have our day go. Right. So, I mean, not to say there weren't still outside influences, but we really wanted to focus on us instead of everybody else's expectations on what a wedding or what our wedding should look like. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it sounds like it was well enjoyed by all of your guests too. It was, so. yeah. Yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. I think that's cool, like dispelling that air of anxiety that can come with, you know, maybe disappointing someone or telling them, no, we're not going to do it that way. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Yeah, and the thing is, like the caveat of having a surprise is that you have to know that everyone's going to receive it well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because if you have like a family dynamic where, or like even a friend dynamic where it's not going to be received well, then you mm -hmm. might just be setting yourself up for failure as it is and have like a lot of people mad at you. Which right. we didn't end up happening because we're very lucky that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but so again, an intentional, intentional, like thoughtful decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Simon and Ali, when it came to family help, I mean, you had professionals in your family who were. <laughs> yeah, we were so lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone just. <laughs> I sound horrible. Everyone just did what they were told. <laughs> <laughs> We like that for you. Yeah, no. They just wanted to help. They just wanted to really help. Did. And we had we previously, sorry. I think right before we got engaged, we went to one of my best friend's super DIY wedding on Gabriola Island. Okay. Um, we used that for a lot of inspiration, for sure. We ripped off a couple yeah. things. You know. <laughs> a few. Um, but... So we helped so good. much, and then they in turn helped us mm -hmm. so much as well. So. Yeah, there was no real like backlash, like, oh, you should do this, this is how it's done. People oh. just let us be. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. Yeah, I like that. So good influence then on that side. Yeah, a lot of breathing room, a lot of wisdom. Cool. And yeah, my best friend um, whose wedding we went to, um, he said his only regret was he didn't have enough time to hang out with everybody and he didn't right. party with everybody enough and he just felt too swept up and too busy and I wanted to make sure that we weren't too busy and that we weren't swept up and that we were visiting and cool. just you know it's nice to watch your grandma have a conversation with one of your best friends yeah. that yeah, you're like dynamic hey yeah. that would never happen otherwise. <laughs> no <laughs> that's what I was there for that's cool I like that and Navy and Elena, you obviously had a lot of guests coming from other places. So was guest experience pretty high on that? Or did you have a lot of input from people that maybe pulled you away? Yeah, I think in hearing everyone speak, I think a reflection we had is that wedding planning and the wedding weekend experience was quite paradoxical sometimes. So we really wanted to make sure our guests had fun. Yes. But these are the people that would have had fun regardless of what 
was there, but I think that led to this increased expectation we put on ourselves. ourselves yeah. So yeah. that was a little tricky to remember, like, hey, you're actually doing it for you and you need to enjoy this. Yes. And they would have been there just to see you two have fun and, and, I, and I would probably feel the same yeah. if I was the guest in the wedding. Yeah. Uh, but kind of like forgot that when we did it yeah. for ourselves. I think too when plans change, like we forget that n nobody knew what our plans were to mm -hmm. begin with. So we may have some like expectations or some like disappointment about something not working out the way we thought it would. And then like yeah. everyone who shows up, they had no like prior context. They have no idea what you were thinking. And so, yeah, how it was, was just supposed to go. Or? How it was supposed to go, what yeah. it should be. And so like we had those and every once in a while, that's when those conversations about like our intentions would come back up because we're like, should we be doing this? What should we be doing? Mm -hmm. Is this right yes. for us? So yeah. That's actually, that's a beautiful sentiment and it makes so much sense. Like sometimes we lose sight and think of the wedding as this big production and a show and I am so, so guilty of that. But really what it is, is it's your loved ones coming together and like having the room filled with love and they would love it no matter what is such a good thing to remember. And I think something that you can kind of only get in hindsight, right? Cause you, you were there, you experienced it, you saw it. So that's, that's invaluable. Um, really quickly, just to bring it back to sustainability when we're talking about this, is there anything you would have changed about your guest count in hindsight with, with sustainability in mind? I think you actually all did quite a good job. So the answer might be no, but if there was anything you would change. We had really helpful guests. Ooh. <laughs> and, and sometimes very much so. But they took a, all our desserts oh, yeah. at night in those takeout boxes. <laughs> and then the next day, you know, you have to clean up your hotel room and we lost all our desserts. Yeah. <laughs> so it's not a tip, it's more just sharing an experience. But like we had all this leftover stuff that could have been, we would have eaten Consumed, it or yeah. shared or what yeah. have you. And so just takeout like, boxes are yeah. a mistake in like many, many ways. Yeah. But yeah, so no, they took it great, count? right? Cleared the space as you need to after your wedding's done. Oh and then, then our food was gone. So <laughs> like we would have probably just been like, give like, it to like us, let us. Yeah, yes, yeah, but bit. they were probably like, bride and groom, you just, you know, leave or, or yeah, whatever it was. No. Yeah, yeah, I think numbers wise, we were. Yeah, numbers is good though. Yeah. 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 About the same? Yeah. Awesome. Honestly, it's impressive to hear you all had very different starting points and backgrounds and reasons you did everything, but you ended up with a number that was both reasonable and really true to you, and it made it all the day it was supposed to be. Very cool. I don't have a good end to this, but. <laughs> <laughs> You've been so good with the transitions. I know, I'm losing it, I'm losing it. <laughs>